The video you're about to watch is the second in a lecture series on linear demand functions for the IB economics year one students. In this second lecture, what we're going to talk about are the things that can cause our autonomous level of demand, which in our demand equation is the A variable to change and how that would affect the demand curve for a particular good. As we saw in our previous video lecture, a change in the price of a good causes a change in the quantity demanded and thereby a movement along a demand curve. Of course, this would be illustrated on a demand function as a change in price and a movement along. For example, in our graph here, at a price of $2, 680 pizzas are demanded, but at a price of $4, 560 pizzas are demanded. This is simply a change in the P variable in our linear demand equation. However, the next question is what happens if the A variable changes and what could cause a change in the A variable? In fact, anything that is a non-price determinant of demand, if it should change, will lead to a change in the A variable in our linear demand equation and a corresponding shift in the demand curve. Let's consider an example. Let's assume that pizza and hamburgers are substitute goods for one another, and that the price of hamburgers, which we'll use PH for the abbreviation, decreases. A decrease in the price of hamburgers, as we know, since they are substitutes, should lead to a decrease in the demand for pizzas. How would this look and how would this affect our demand equation for pizzas? A decrease in the price of hamburgers causes the demand for pizzas to fall, since the substitute good is now cheaper and more attractive to consumers. In our demand equation, this is illustrated simply as a decrease in the A variable, in which originally was 800 in our original demand equation. Let's assume that a fall in the price of pizzas changes our demand for pizza. Sorry, a fall in the price of hamburgers changes our demand for pizzas from QD equals 800 minus 60P to QD equals 600 minus 60p. Notice that our b variable, the minus 60, has not changed, indicating that consumers will still be just as responsive to a change in price of pizzas as they were before the change in demand. However, our autonomous level of demand, also called our q intercept, has decreased now. How does this affect our demand curve for pizzas? It's very simple. The entire demand curve has now shifted to the left. So, whereas before demand began at 800 pizzas at a price of zero, now the demand for pizzas begins at 600 and slopes upwards at a rate of negative 60. Notice that the slope of the demand curve is identical to our original demand curve. The only difference is now demand has decreased for pizzas. We can now use our new demand function of QD equals 600 minus 60P to develop a new demand schedule. As you can see at a price of zero, the quantity demanded is now 600 minus 60 times zero, or 600 pizzas. This tells us the Q intercept or the autonomous level of demand or that number which would be demanded at a price of zero. So we now solve the demand schedule that we showed in the lecture and $10. Here's our new demand schedule for pizzas. Notice once again that as the price of pizzas rises, the quantity demanded for pizzas falls. Notice also that the rate at which the quantity demanded falls is the same as it was at our original demand function of QD equals 800 minus 60P. That of course is because the slope is the same. The slope is still minus 60, indicating for, for every $1 increase in the price of pizzas, the quantity demanded falls by 60 units. Of course, on our demand schedule here, the price is increasing in $2 increments, which means that for every $2 increase in price, the quantity demanded falls by 120 units. Notice, however, that the A variable has changed due to the lower price of hamburgers. The total demand for pizzas is now lower than it was before the price of hamburgers fell, meaning that the entire demand curve is shifted to the left. Our Q intercept is now at 600, and at a price of $10, there are now zero pizzas demanded. 
now we can see that at each of our original prices from our original demand schedule, there will be a lower quantity demanded of pizzas. For example, at $2, instead of there being 680 pizzas demanded as there was in our original schedule, there are now 480 pizzas demanded. Whereas at a price of $4, instead of there being um, 560 pizzas demanded as there were at our original demand schedule, there are now only 360 pizzas demanded. This is because the demand for pizzas has decreased due to a change in one of the non-price determinants of demand. So what are some other things that can cause the demand for pizzas to change? Well, you may recall from a previous video lecture that there are six non-price determinants of demand, which we summarize using the abbreviation T-O-E-I-S-S. -S. T was for tastes and preferences of consumers. O was for other goods prices, referring to substitutes and complements. E is for the expectations of consumers regarding future prices or future income levels. I is for the current incomes of consumers. S refers to the size of the market regarding the number of consumers in the market. And the other S stands for special circumstances. If any of these non-price determinants of demand change, we would expect the demand curve to shift. Therefore, these are sometimes called demand shifters. Of course, on a demand function, a change in one of these non-price variables will lead to a change in the A variable. That concludes part two of our lecture on linear demand functions. In part three, we will explore factors that can change the B variable in a demand equation, which, as you may understand already, will change the slope of the demand curve, indicating a change in the responsiveness of consumers to prices.